Hi everyone, welcome back to Useful Genetics. This is an extra little video after Lecture 6H, um, giving you a little bit of information about accessing and using raw SNP typing data. That's data that hasn't been analyzed by somebody else for you. Uh, first, I'll show you what the raw data looks like and how you might be able to get it. We'll also talk about how you can get raw SNP data of other people's genomes and what you can do with raw SNP data once you have it. So here's some raw SNP data from my 23andMe analysis. Basically, it consists of just the minimum information. The SNP ID, the chromosome it's on, its position on the chromosome, and the genotype of the person who was analyzed. So we have information for the beginning of chromosome 1, um, all the way down through chromosome 22. We have information for the X chromosome, and we have information for mitochondrial DNA. We'll talk more about this in the context of ancestry in a couple of lectures. Now, you have paid for and are entitled to download your raw SNP typing DNA, your raw SNP typing You've paid for and are entitled to download your raw SNP typing data if you got it, the analysis done through 23andMe or Family Tree DNA or Ancestry.com. You may have access to it through other SNP analysis providers too. You also can get other people's raw SNP typing data. There's a site called OpenSNP where people who believe in the open availability of scientific information, especially genetic information, have posted their um, raw SNP data. And they've got more than a thousand genomes worth of SNP data openly available to anybody in the world who would like to play around with it, um, including mine. Now, OpenSNP their data has been used for quite a few things. Um, there have been research papers published. Um, people have developed all sorts of apps for it. I'll show you a, couple, um, a list in a few minutes. Um, and there have been art projects. I'm going to show you the results of one such art project using the OpenSNP data. So the music that you hear is actually computer-generated music generated from this person's SNP sequence. Each note corresponds to a different bass or a different pattern of basses. Uh, people have um, mined the public 23andMe data looking for rare alleles that weren't flagged in the formal SNP analysis. For example, they found a number of examples of mitochondrial alleles that were quite relatively rare in the big population. There are a lot of other things that you can do with your raw SNP data if you want to. And there's a wonderful website called The Genetic Genealogist. It's basically a group blog, and one of their resources is a detailed list of things you can do with your DNA test results. So there's some, there's some more, there's some more, and some more. The only one I'm going to talk about at all is Promethease, which I thought was particularly useful because it provides an inexpensive replacement for the kind of phenotypic analysis information that you would have gotten from 23andMe. So Prometheus is a, a spin-off of a site called Snippedia, which is a public open wiki-based database of phenotypes and um, research associated with SNPs. And with Prometheus, you can purchase a detailed phenotype analysis that will report all of the phenotypic research information that's been published um, for particular SNPs that you may have. And before you um, 
undertake this analysis with them, they have you sign a disclaimer saying that you know what the data is based on, you know it's probably not going to explain much of the causes of your phenotypes and that you shouldn't do anything medically rash until you've discussed this data with um, medical experts and you understand their privacy policies. Then you will be asked to play, pay the whopping sum of five dollars and you'll be asked for your ethnicity because that allows the analysis to be more specific um, just as with uh, say 23andMe that the because the genome-wide association studies were done on people from a particular population, they can be interpreted much more accurately if it's known that you belong to that population too. You notice that the names of these populations are the names of populations that we discussed in when we talked about HapMap. So while you're waiting, it doesn't take very long, um, they have a 25-minute video that you can watch um, providing a detailed guide through using their resources. And this video is actually quite helpful because their resources aren't nearly as um, easy to use as, say, 23andMe's. Um, here's an example of their original interface. You can see that it's based on a wiki style. Um, and it's not very user friendly. You can, however, you can download the report and read it on your own computer. It's an HTML file, or you can view it all online. In either case, there's a new interface that you can use, which is a little bit clearer, but still not very easy to use. But for five dollars, it's not bad, um, giving you access to all of the phenotypic information associated with different SNPs. And you can click on individual SNPs and get a detailed description of what's known. Um, one of my favorite is SNPs that are related to your ability to taste bitter substances. And the authors of this paragraph say that if you carry the taster version and therefore are more sensitive to bitter tastes, then as a child, you probably didn't like bitter tasting foods like Brussels sprouts. But because this sensitivity that's due to these particular alleles decreases as you get older, that probably by the time you're grown up, you'll think olives and Brussels sprouts are pretty tasty, as I do. So what we've done, we've considered um, whether you might be able to download your raw SNP typing data. I've showed you what the data looks like. It's pretty simple. Um, I've also shown you how you can access SNP typing data that's been made publicly available by other people. And I've shown you resources that you can use to analyze your own SNP typing data independent of the companies that generated it for you. Coming up next, we're going to move into talking about using SNP and other information for ancestry analysis. I hope to see you there.